Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Catch22, and welcome to episode 35 of the Sega Holic. In this episode, I'm gonna be building a Dreamcast cable so I can get an RGB signal to my Framemeister, which will not only give me the best video for playing, but also the best video for capture on the Elgato HD60. The Dreamcast RGB output is best via VGA, which uses RGB HV where the horizontal and vertical sync signals are separated. Unfortunately, the Framemeister uses RGBS, which is also called RGBC for its sync. RGBS combines the horizontal and vertical sync into one sync signal. This is where an RGB interface comes in. It produces a combined sync signal the Framemeister can use. And I got this information from XRGB Wiki and from Retro RGB. I recommend you head on over to familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of RGB. The materials needed are a 8-pin male-to-male DIN cable, which the Framemeister uses for its RGB jack. And you can find the pinouts over at uh, GameSX. Obviously an RGB interface. In this case, this is the Extron RGB192 interface. And you can see this one has the RGBS sync signal along with the HV signals. Some BNC to RCA jacks to convert the BNC jacks from the RGB interface to RCA. So we can use standard audio RCA cables to get the signals from the RGB interface over to the Framemeister. Also a VGA box. And the interesting thing about this VGA box is that this is actually the American version. The only thing different from this and the Japanese version obviously is this sticker right here. And lastly, a 3.5 millimeter TRS cable to get audio from the VGA box over to the Framemeister. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is cut the DIN cable in half. Again, this is an 8-pin male-to-male DIN cable. can reuse this other half for other custom cables that connect directly to your XRGB mini and you can bypass the JP21 adapter. But I test fitted this end to the Framemeister. Um, what you want to get is a rounded one if you can. The squared off portion will butt up against the Framemeister so it does not fit correctly. So I'm going to just shave some of this material off. Now we're going to strip the ends of the wires from this end. Okay, you can see here I peeled back the shield and see just how skinny the gauge is for the wires. Um, this is going to make it very difficult uh, to splice in the RCA cable to this. Um, it's because it's uh, super thin and, and stripping this will obviously take a lot of careful effort. Okay, I finally got all the wires stripped. Make sure to keep the shielding. And now we're gonna take our RCA cable and also cut this in half and strip it also. For the RCA cable, we're going to be using both of these. One is going to be for the RGB and this is going to be for the sync signal. You can see the RCA cables have stranded copper shielding on here. So I'm going to take the shielding off to one side and we're going to braid the entire shielding together along with the other cable. From here, I'm just going to tape both cables together. Now I'm going to mark which one of these uh, connectors here will be red, green, and blue, and sync. I'm gonna use one of the whites for sync and use these colored tapes to mark the blue and green signal. Now I'm gonna cut about a four foot length from the TRS cable. You want the extra length because um, the cable is gonna go from the Framemeister to the VGA box instead of the VGA interface. Make sure not to, again, damage the shielding. 
Now we're just going to twist together the wires on the mini DIN cable and pre-tin these wires. Okay, we got everything tinned. This cable actually has a bare ground wire that's connected to the shielding. So we can actually cut the shielding off. Okay, here's the uh, pin outs for the RGB mini. And you can see the ground center pin is offset to the right here. Whereas on here, it's offset to the left. Obviously, when you plug it in this way, it'll match up. So looking at from here, pins are gonna be reversed left to right. So pin eight, the red video, is gonna be uh, this pin right here. So what we're gonna do is use our continuity checker to check to see what this red eight pin is gonna be connected to here. So first we're gonna test out this yellow wire. Looks like the yellow wire is gonna be our ground pin. Okay, we have a blue wire here. Looks like it's blue video. Let's check this red wire. And just do this for the rest of the wires. Okay, and I'm gonna be wiring the wires from the RCA cable to the DIN cable here. It's gonna wrap this wire around and solder. But before we solder, I'm gonna put a piece of um, shrink tubing on the wire so we can insulate the splice. Okay, and now you want to do this for the rest of the wires. Okay, I just got done with our Frankenstein cable. And once you got everything connected, just tape everything up. And now we're just gonna double check our pins to make sure everything's uh, in order. And also we're gonna check if the pins are shorted. So I got here the lead connected to the green, which is pin seven. And we're gonna check ground. Again, remember ground is the center pin. This is red. Sink is three. We're gonna check the audio jack. The tip on the TRS is the left audio. Ring is right audio. And sleeve is ground. Okay, everything checks out. Now we're just gonna be connecting this to the RGB interface and the Framemeister, and hopefully this works out. Okay, we have everything hooked up. We have Framemeister, which is on an RGB mode. The RGB interface turned on with the power supply connected to the VGA box via VGA cable going to the um, RGB interface and our homemade cable going to the Framemeister directly. And here's an interesting thing about the VGA box. Here's the American instructions. And you can see the FCC label on the back of the uh, VGA box. All right. And let's see uh, what this is displaying. And you can see there, it's actually displaying 480p. And in here we have Virtuon. The RGB interface was $20 shipped. Cables were about seven to eight dollars shipped from Morning Price, so less than $30. We have 480p on a Dreamcast.